Hey everyone. So recently I've been trying to get into the habit of using Vim or NeoVim specifically as a, my daily driver or main editor. And today I just want to go over a little bit of the configuration. Now I'm not going to get into every single detail. In fact, there's a YouTube channel by Chris at Chris at Machine, and he goes over a lot of, or he has a lot of Vim videos, specifically on how to set up plugins from scratch with everything. And I took a lot of inspiration going through some of his videos. Not exact, obviously, but something that works for me. But what I'm going to go over today is specifically on the closure setup that I have. Now this is the plugins file inside of my Vim config. And these three are the plugins that I'm using. And you'll notice that none of them is Fireplace, which is previously the go-to. It will be this repo here. And Vim Fireplace is pretty good, but I found a, another plugin called Conjure, and I feel it's a little bit more modern to my experiences with Fireplace. It also comes with the advantage of being able to work with other Lisp languages, so Fennel, Janet, and Racket, which I don't have any experience with, but maybe someday. So back to Vim, just to show a little bit of Conjure, there's a command called Conjure School, which will bring up this interactive lesson thing. It's a little bit like Vim Tutor. And all the conjure commands are mapped to the local leader key, which by default is comma. So here it's saying to evaluate the entire buffer, we could do comma EV, so evaluate buffer. Oh, that's also a note. Um, the evaluation commands in conjure is a little bit more intuitive, at least for me, than fireplace. And then down here, we could evaluate the inside. So that's comma EE. It'll bring up this little buffer here with all of your evaluations. But that's only one piece of the puzzle. So what Conjure provides is a REPL connection so that we could evaluate code inside of a REPL, inside of our editor. But let's go back to plugins, which is not this one. Uh, it's then plugins. Okay. These two plugins are going to be more about some editor niceties. So CLJ Font is code formatting. So whenever I save my code formats nicely, and then async clj omni, I don't know if I'm still using this actually, uh, I might be able to get rid of it. But essentially this is for IntelliSense, and now that we've gotten to IntelliSense, we can go over the main plugin that all new Vim people will tell you to get, which is coc.nvim. And yes, I still pronounce it as cock in my head, but officially it's called coc. So, a brief overview of coc also named Conquer of Completion, is basically the IntelliSense engine of VS Code, just now that you have it inside of NeoVim. And the reason why we're here on this page right now is because, uh, down here somewhere, all right. Um, just like VS Code, COC has extensions, and inside of extensions, there are a lot of user-generated stuff uh, down here, yeah. So here's the list of everything that you can get. And most of these are just language server protocols or the IntelliSense for a specific programming language. There are some also niceties like Angular and Actions and Discord. This is in alphabetical order and you'll notice that Clojure is not here. So what I had to do, which is a little bit of customization, is that I had to grab and configure my own custom language server protocol to work within COC. And that's where the closure LSP comes in. And as mentioned before, LSP stands for Language Server Protocol. And what you're going to need to do to make all of this work with, with COC is first go to releases and download the binary for closure LSP. And once you do that, you can put it in any directory where you can have access to it in your path. And what I mean by that is if I open up my .zshrc file, and these are all my paths for stuff. I have a special line here where it says that anything that I put inside my scripts directory, inside of my home folder, I could run it in the terminal. So if I close this and do a little ranger and go home, and this is my scripts folder. And here is where I could add any executable scripts. And this is where I add the closure LSP binary. This means that I can call closure LSP from the command line. And that's important because in your NVIM configuration, if you have COC installed, you'll have a COC settings.json, which you're gonna open up. And there's this property here called language server. This is where you can add custom language servers. So that's 
inside of Envim, COC will take over and use this specifically for IntelliSense. So you'll see that I added Closure LSP as one of them. And the first two is going to be how NeoVim runs this in the background. It's using Bash and then it's sending in the arguments of Closure LSP as the binary that we're using. The file types that it runs on is only things that are labeled as Closure inside of Vim. And that's what this array means. And this property is also very important. Uh, root patterns will tell Closure LSP the root of your project. So the flats, project, repo, whatever you want to call it. From the example, it only says project.clj, and that's for Linegan projects. But there's been a shift over to Closure CLI based projects. So make sure to add depths.eden as well. These two properties, I'm not ex exactly sure what they do. Additional schemes, I'm Pretty sure it has to do with running IntelliSense from a compile closure project. That's why the jar is here. And then finally, initialization options are all the other options that you can add to closure LSP. Which, if you go back to the repo for closure LSP, it's gonna be down here in the README somewhere. Yeah, right here. Initialization options. And these are just other options that you can add. Like if you want to configure the linter, which I think by default is CLJ condo. You could add some other options to make it lint a little lighter or, or stricter for you and some other stuff. Oh, let's go back to plugins. There's one thing that I forgot to mention and that's specifically calling out this plugin of vim.clj font. So if you do a Google search, the first one that comes up is from Venatus, Venatius, and that one relies on Fireplace as a dependency because it uses Fireplace to format your code. The one that we actually want to use is from DMAC. The reason being is that we don't have Fireplace, so we can't use the other one. And this one actually uses a Go binary. So to use it in addition to Vim, you need to have Go installed and you also need to do a Go get to grab the CLJ font binary that you can run. And that's pretty much it. So once you have all of that installed, that is basically my configuration for closure development inside of NeoVim. So a little bit of a quick video today, but it took me a lot longer to kind of figure out this specific configuration. So I hope that it's proved valuable to someone out there. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.